Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. You, you've been saying all year that as the weather turns colder, it's, it's tougher for kickers. And and we've seen guys, I mean, you know, a lot of really good kickers miss, miss field goals. Any any thought of what's going on with Jake? And, and with a guy as accomplished as him, do you just kind of – not worry about it, or how do you approach it? Yeah, I'm glad my comments didn't come back and bite me with the uh, with the weather change or anything. And, and you know, it's funny with Jake. You know, he's such a competitor and he's such a good kicker. You almost kind of take it a little bit for granted. Like, all right, when he's out there, it's it's, a, it's an automatic. But you know, I know the big question is how do you feel about? I have such supreme confidence in Jake. You know, and at times it's just not your day. Um, we'd be probably a little bit more on edge if the ball was sprayed all over the place. But if you saw the three kicks, they missed in the exact same spot, right off that, that left upright. He played, it was a draw, and it just kind of overdrew on him with a little bit of wind. You know, when the spray chart's all over the place and you don't really have an answer for that, I think it's a little bit more worrisome when the spray chart is right there within all a couple inches. You all right, that's more of a, I could fix this with my aiming point more than anything else. And again, Jake is so, such a professional, and I don't think anybody's a bigger critic than Jake on himself. Um, he's going to come back and work tomorrow like he always does and, you know, put his best foot forward and get us ready to go because we all know, you know, in these tight game situations, especially in the later half of the season, it comes down to a big kick or, you know, put the, the lead uh, out of a, into a two-score game. So we have supreme confidence in Jake uh, going forward, and I know he'll have supreme confidence going back in there, going to work tomorrow. So since it was the same spot, you know, after the first two, was it took a, did it take a while to gain confidence that yes, that was the adjust, adjusted move that needed to be made? For myself or for Jake? For Jake, like conversation was like after a second, it's like okay, maybe aim. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, like you almost you can't for a kicker, it's always a gray area. There's never a black and white because the wind does change. It could change going the opposite direction for the wind. You know, on that first one, it died right before he kicked it. Not saying that's the reason, but he had an aiming point thinking the wind would push it back in right there. And same going to the opposite end. But, you know, he, he's such a resilient cat that he's able to come back and he, you know, put the score to a two-possession game when we needed it and the extra points right there and those, shorty, those shorter field goals. It's no different than a basketball player seeing one go in. All right, there's some, some more confidence going in, splitting the upright. So for him, I think it's just, you know, just a little bit of an aiming thing. And I think, you know, Everything's hindsight twenty twenty. If he goes back to it, he'd play a little bit more to the right. But I don't think he would change anything how he how he was striking the ball. It was good contact. Ball was just falling right to left, played a draw, and the wind pushed it. But again, him going back in and you know he was out there yesterday, kind of just tapping some balls. He, he just wants to get back out there and and you know help the team in any way he possibly can. So when you look at the the review the film, like the mechanics or what they normally are with yeah. Jake and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there was nothing like he was out of order. Or, you know, it was, you know, he had, you know, good good uh, play in terms of his leg and everything, playing a right to left draw, just what the kick of the day was right there. And it just happened to fall off at, at, the, uh, at the apex of it. So it's not one of those things mechanically or things of that nature where he has to really go back and change everything. It was just something with the aiming point. And, you know, when we come back, you know, tomorrow, Get as much confidence in seeing the ball, uh, seeing the ball go through up the uprights, and get us moving forward to Sunday. Because again, it's going to come back to some some big kicks going into these uh, last six games of the regular season. What does it, what does it say about him that you know when he missed those first two kicks, it didn't like snowball? Like he, you know, he then made you know the two more, and you know obviously he missed the extra point, but then made the other two. You know, it didn't let him like affect. I just didn't affect him beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that goes back to who he is as a person. You know. He's had so many big kicks in his career. You guys obviously know before I got here when he was a rookie and hit a 61 yard against the Giants, you know, that resiliency factor last last year in the rain against Buffalo going out there and having that mindset for him, you know, you can't dwell on it too much. Um, just like in anything else, even as a coach or a player, like it's the next play. We'll, we'll review the play. We'll try to get it corrected as, soon, as quick as we possibly can. For him to come back and, you know, hit those two, hit the field goals, you know, before the half, then the shorter one, 31. Uh, it, it just helps out and just it just shows how resilient he is, not just as a player, but as a person. Cooper's been good as the punt returner filling in for Britain. When Britain's good to go, is he jumping right back in as the starting punt returner? Yeah, you know, I can't say enough good things about Cooper and what he's done, not just only as a, a defensive player, but going back out there and, you know, we kind of – we kind of had a rough start in, in Tampa Bay, and that's just on me as a coach more than anything else. But getting him settled in after the bye, he's done an unbelievable job. But like I said before, like it's always nice to have two options. You get a little bit more creative with it and having both Covey 
when he does return at, at some point and having Cooper. So going forward, we both we, we feel confident, you know, when Covey does get to come back or, you know, if it takes a little bit longer that we have Cooper back there. How do you view the similarities and the differences between their styles? Do you think like they could be complementary to one another? Yeah, I mean, they're both very fearless as punt returners. Um, obviously, Cooper, bigger body, um, and he kind of surprises you with his, with his physique, you know, uh, bigger body, and he does have some breakaway speed, whereas Covey is very cerebral, and he finds different lanes, and his vision is very good in terms of that. So they kind of complement themselves. One, you know, Cooper being more of a, a bigger body getting downhill, but Covey's no, no slouch either. He likes to one-cut stretch and get down the field. So having those two complementary type uh, individuals that catch the ball very well, off the punter's foot gives them the, the head start more than anything else where they don't have to worry about it. They know, all right, this ball is going this way. I could get over there, race over there, then assess the situation. On Cooper's big return a couple of weeks ago, he reversed field on that. What are your, your typical rules for, for the returners when it comes to either getting north-south or taking it wide when they Yeah, I think or... Cooper did a really good job of puncturing first. And, again, like I always said, it always starts with the guys on the outside. You see Keeley against C.J. Goodwin does a heck of a job of stopping him on the initial attack. So that allows Coop – to get five to six yards vertical, north and south, that entices the the core guys to get down there. And if he knows I got some speed, a guy is head up on me and I can outrun him, that's when I could break it to the outside. He did a great job of enticing. Then he gets outside, being able to beat the core guys and take it uh, to to the sideline for that big 31-yard return. So we, we always preach, get us the first down. If you get us the first down, you've been that first wave, then you can pick and choose if you want to bounce it or keep gashing down the field. Similar to the kickers, um, kickoffs, not this week, you're going to be in a pristine environment, but as the weather gets a little bit worse, uh, do you expect the kickoff returns to, to pick up a little bit? Yeah, obviously, you know, the ball just not going to travel as well. You know, you got wind, rain, whatever it may be. And I think the, the kickoff returns have kind of gone up a little bit, just, you know, just how, how it rolls and everything. So we've been able to get a couple of returns right here. And, you know, outside of, you know, we have to really clean up the last two weeks of those three penalties. We, we, I thought the guys have done a good job of getting North and South Will and Kenny Gainwell, you know, getting that ball to that 35, 36-yard line. It, it, it helps the offense. Obviously, they don't have to get an extra, you know, first down. They're already within there, and it gives you to that fringe range if you want to flip the field with your punt team. So, again, once we clean up the, those uh, – those holding penalties and the illegal block in the back on our kickoff return, we've done some good stuff of just puncturing, getting past the 30-yard line, getting to the 33, 35. So got to keep wrapping it, got to keep working at it because it's going to come into play these next, you know, you know, we have a few few more home games um, playing Baltimore. Like the, the weather's going to be a little bit dicier than it is, like you said, in L.A. So we got to be able to, one, protect the ball, then get up the field and use it, you know, as a positive for our team. Did you think they were all penalties, all, all three of those calls? Are you gonna get me fined right there? Hey, I play. I play whatever the refs say. They got a hard job. It's, it's new for everyone, so we just gotta make sure our technique is fine and not give it to the refs where it may be gray area call, may not. That we're clean getting forward. Couple more. What uh, stands out about the Rams special teams unit? You know, they, they've done a, a really good job. I think Chase has done a, a really good job in terms of taking that young core. You know, Ethan Evans has a very strong leg for a second year cat. Um, I know Cardi, again, rookie, but he's done a good job, hit some big kicks for them. And really their field goal block team is, is something to watch out for. I think 97 blocked one last week against New England. They do a great job of punishing field goal teams. So we got to be ready to protect Jake at all costs, let him have a clean pocket. But I think they play extremely hard. They kind of take after Chase and what he was as a player. I know he played for the Giants for a while, you know, and being in Carolina, they were a physical unit. So we got to be able to come back tomorrow and understand that this team is very physical and we got to match that physicality. You mentioned uh, Kenny Gainwell. I think yesterday Nick said that he's had a bigger role on, on special teams uh, this year. Just kind of what, what does he mean to your units? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have enough time to tell you how much I appreciate Kenny Gainwell. Obviously, I came in here when he got drafted. Uh, and he's, you know, we asked him to do things, and he doesn't, he doesn't blink. He says, yeah, I got you. Um, he's always wide-eyed. He's bright. Um, he asks great questions, and he's always willing. And, you know, that big, you know, he had that spell with Saquon. Then he had to come back and kick off, and all those guys dapped him up because he brought some energy to the field right there. And I know we kicked a touchback, but he's down there hyping up the, the end zone right there to get the crowd going. I think it came into Reed having that interception. So him just buying into everything and just being kind of a role model for these younger guys that this guy's toting the rock, but he's still out there on two or three phases really just sets the, 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 the bar for these young guys. Like, hey, you are playing some offense and defense, but you can also contribute on special teams.